Hello everyone, Madlatch here. Today we're going to be working with a, a knockback sort of effect in the Godot game engine, and we're going to be doing this on a kinematic body 2D. As you can see, we have a simple top-down 2D movement script, and with it we can have this gun-like object uh, sticking from our player, and we can move backwards like as if it was a knockback effect uh, from the direction that uh, we fire from. And you could uh, attach a bullet, and I'll show an example with that, but uh, this is more about getting the movement aspects down, and uh, if you want to make this, uh, continue watching. So I'm not going to go over how we get the top-down 2D movement to work. I mean, I I've, I think I've explained this uh, many times in multiple different videos, and I'll link something up here in the top right if I remember, um, uh, where I explain all that stuff. How, however, we are going to think about what does it mean to be knocked back, because I don't want this to be an answer type of tutorial video where you watch it and then you get the answer, then you go put it into your game, and that's the end of the story. I want this to be a, a slightly longer video, but you'll be able to think through it yourself and, and hopefully make the actual result by pausing the middle of the video, closing the tab you're watching this on, and then go implement it yourself after. However, if you still don't figure it out yourself, then that's not a problem because I'll also be providing the solutions to this hypothetical problem. So let's say we have our player over here, and we want to think of our uh, the gun, the knockback we get from our gun, as a sort of force. Now, it would be a good question to ask, which way is this force pointing? Well, the force is actually pointing us backwards in the opposite direction, because according to Newton's laws, uh, the force that we get from the bullet, which is going this way, uh, rightwards, is actually pushing on the gun, which is pushing on us, and pushing us backwards. Now, of course, I have to draw this with an equal length, because let's say just say the length is the magnitude or the size of the force, then it's going to be equally pushing us back. And that's what gives a game a, like a feel of a really heavy weapon. For example, in a video game like Doom, the pushback amount is actually a lot smaller for a pistol, whereas for something like the BFG or the a shotgun or a rocket launcher, it's a lot farther back represented by the longer arrow because that's a more powerful weapon and the designer wants to give you or the game designer wants to give you a feel of this is something powerful so this is a uh, application of the the pushback effect but what, is, what does it mean to be pushed back well it means to be to get a force added onto you so that's important to notice because the player can be moving in whatever direction it wants to but there's going to be a force directly opposite to the way that the player is currently facing the mouse so this means that we'll have to add a vector. Well, what do I mean by vector? Well, a vector is just the direction that we're moving in, in this instance. So if we know that our player's velocity is a vector, right? Because our velocity is speed times, in this instance, get direction. The get direction function returns a uh, vector two. We can uh, take this vector two and we can do something with it. If you're looking at the code, you might see that there's an extra variable over here called extra velocity. That is directly related to the extra velocity we'd be getting when we fire a bullet because we're going backwards, right? Because the bullet is pushing us back. And the reason it's pushing us back is because we push the bullet forward. And why is this the case? Well, that's just the case of the universe. Like, <laughs> like we hit a fundamental limit now. And that's an absolute truth that if something is pushing, if you push something, then it's gonna push back at you with an equal and opposite force which means that it will be the exact same strength but in the opposite direction. That's just a fundamental constant of reality. It has to do with the electron clouds pushing you back, but uh, that's beyond the scope of this Godot tutorial. So we're just going to go and implement it now. And if you want to pause and think about it, you can and try implementing it yourself. But I'll, of course, I'll walk uh, anyone through this. We can obviously think of it from the perspective of our game where we have this uh, gun, or as I like to call it, boomstick or whatever, and we can think of it getting a click. So we can go to our project settings and we can go to the input map, uh, create a click event. So over here I have a click event. I also defined a movement event. You don't need that. I was experimenting with something else, but a click event is just a a just a mouse button. Um, all devices, device zero, doesn't make a difference. Add, same story. In fact, I'll do device zero left button. And we can say something along the lines of, so if we just click, that's going to be like firing a, a bullet, right? But it can also mean that we would get a, a difference variable, right? Let's just make a very quick variable called difference. And that will just be the difference between our uh, get underscore global mouse position minus the uh, global position of the player because we want to subtract, because uh, that's how top-down 2D games work. We have to work with the mouse position and then the 2D position of the player. Uh, we can obviously normalize this and this will be the extra velocity that we impart on the player because if you think about it, uh, let's say, let's say this is the player over here. If this is the player and I have my mouse cursor up here in the right, then the difference between the player and the mouse is the direction that we will be firing our bullet in. And this is also the exact same velocity that we would be firing off in this direction. Uh, let me just get, so this 
color over here is the exact same as this direction over here. But the thing is, we want it to go in the opposite direction and push our player back at a slight angle because I drew this at a slight angle and we just want to push the player back. So we could go over here with our difference variable and set it equal to the uh, extra velocity is going to be equal to our difference. But we also want to, because we're normalizing it, which means we're just making the length one. So instead of it being whatever length this is, we're just going to shrink it down a bit. So we could uh, uh, work with it in a, a, like we can understand how to work with it better because it, because we don't know how far the, the, the mouse and the player is, for example, over here, if let's say the player's, uh, let's say the player's mouse is over here, then the, the, the length of this vector over here is much larger. So if we were going to not normalize it and then multiply it by some constant, let's just say a thousand for some reason, then we wouldn't, we would get different results and the pushback would be a lot more varied. But if we do dot normalize, we'd get a normalized pushback. Like we would get a, a, a much more consistent or we'd get a perfectly consistent amount of pushback each time we fired the gun. So if we just run it, you can see that we get uh, something we don't want. Uh, why is it? Because uh, first of all, we are moving in the opposite direction. Uh, we want to actually subtract it the other way. Uh, just a silly little vector math error. As you can see, we got pushed back. However, we're not stopping. And to be fair, I didn't explain stopping in this uh, example over here. I never explained the idea of stopping. I explained the idea of getting pushed back. The, the problem is that if you were trying this yourself, that you might have like figured out that there's no friction. What we need to add is friction, and we can easily do that by saying after the after we check our inputs or whatever or whatever logic you have for your inputs, we have to also make sure that the extra velocity that we're adding onto our player, which is this orange arrow back here, we, we want to make sure that this slowly, if this is the length or the 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 power of that pushback, we want to make sure it slowly declines over time to become zero, so it's no longer affecting the player, and we can do that with a lerp function, which just means linear interpolation. It allows us to uh, get a val. It allows us to basically take two values, so value a and value b, and it allows us to slowly go across it over time, and slowly morph the value over here to the value over here. If this doesn't make sense, I'm basically trying to say that this orange color will slowly start to become white, or if this is no, if this is a, if this has a value of one and this has a value of two, it will slowly become like 1.2, 1.5, 1.7. You get the idea, and it will slowly become the value of two. So now when we run the scene, we'll get a pushback effect with just enough knockback, no matter how far away my mouse is. For example, if I get rid of that dot normalized, you're going to see that, uh, yeah, I just get blasted away because I, we don't normalize it. We get multiplied by a thousand. It's just way too much. However, if I just try this, uh, if I just try it like this, you can see that uh, we get pushed back quite a bit, or you can see over here, we get pushed back a little bit over here. We're just going to get pushed back off the screen. Oh, no, not really. Oh, over here, we're just going to get pushed back off the screen because the vector is really large and uh, we just have to normalize it like that to make sure we get consistent pushbacks. But now you might be saying, well, it doesn't look correct because uh, this boomstick over here is not facing the player. That's because we also have to make sure that the boomstick or the, the gun or whatever is pivoting across a particular point. And over here, I use the position 2D, which is a node that literally just carries a position. It has nothing else. If I open the documentation, you can see generic 2D position hint for editing. And for editing purposes, it means for like putting a position somewhere for enemy spawns or whatever. You can use it in like a lot of creative ways. Just think of it as a no 2D, but just mainly for position. It's just easier for the div like when you're designing your game to figure out that, hey, this is position only, not for something else. And we're just going to be pivoting the, the gun across the uh, across this position 2D. The reason we can't rotate the gun itself is because we'll just get some weird action like this, which is not what we want. We want the gun to be pointing where our mouse is. So how could we do that? Well, we could also just say in the physics process function, um, we could just say something like, we could just tell the position 2D to look at, uh, we can just tell it to look at, what, what are we telling it to look at? We can tell it to look at the global mouse position because that's essentially where we want it to look. And now you can see, we get exactly what we have at the beginning of the video. And that's really all there is to it. And I just want to make one small note. Over here, I'm setting the move and slide variable before I even set the extra velocity. This is not a bad practice, but if you do get an error, it might be because of the or like the order of your code. Be just because Godot or most programming languages, in fact, all of them, I'm pretty sure, execute from top to bottom and they'll look at each line one by one and execute it. So over here, when I had it up here, 
Um, Goodell would say, okay, I'm getting the velocity. I'm going to start moving the player. Okay, I'm also then going to check if there's an extra velocity. Okay, then I'm going to make sure I look at the mouse position. Then I'm going to set the extra velocity and make sure it has some friction. And then it'll repeat the same thing. And that's why it worked. If we define extra velocity in here, in the physics process function, you can see that uh, we'll get, we won't get it to work because essentially we aren't moving, we're moving the player before we mess around with the extra velocity. But if we bring the line down, you can see we move, but it's disgusting. The reason is because we keep setting the extra velocity variable back to zero. And that's one workaround I found is just declare the variable outside. So it's set to zero at the start and then physics process can do whatever it wants to it. And it will be taking the previous value from the, the last frame and then working with it. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, just leave a comment. I'm ba basically trying to say that uh, if you declare a variable up here, you can modify the value and the value will stay. And that modified value will persist over time. However, if you declare a variable in here, for example, our difference variable, it will disappear afterwards. It won't persist in the RAM or the memory over time. So that's just a quick tip, I guess. So anyway, uh, this concludes the end of the tutorial. Anyway, this concludes the end of the tutorial, and I hope this helped you make a 2D knockback gun. And this is just a quick example of uh, where, you, where uh, you could use it with a bullet. And I was just experimenting with 2D enemy AIs. Um, let me see if I could find one enemy AI. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, over here. So I was just experimenting with different types of enemy AI, AIs. And um, none of them were really successful, but um, I'm still trying and playing around with it. And I might make a tutorial about it later. But you can see over here that I'm using the exact same code as I showed. And I, mean, I just have some extra code for the smooth movement, but that wasn't part of the tutorial. Anyway, you can see over here we have the... We can have the extra, we see, you can see over here, we have the extra velocity, which is being uh, linear interpolated uh, back to zero. Uh, this is the friction value. I should mention that. Um, this is the friction value. And um, you can see over here, when, when we click, uh, we're instancing a bullet scene. The bullet is spawning. I'm setting the direction of the bullet and this is bullet related stuff, but we're also making sure the extra velocity is the global position minus to get a uh, global mouse position. And then we're normalizing it and I have a different constant over here for a different amount of knockback, but essentially the same idea uh, if you wanted to add a bullet and I'm pretty sure I have a tutorial on how to make a working bullet in Godot. So you could just put those two together, uh, one plus one together and make a cool game. Anyway, that concludes the end of the tutorial. Have an amazing day.